again uh, good afternoon depending on the time that you're going to watch this video i thank you very much for joining me again for this lesson my name is abby um, i'm going to take you through understanding area of quadrilaterals uh, if you're confused of what quadrilaterals are quadrilaterals are shapes with four sides so we are going to focus on uh, specifically two shapes and that is the rectangle and the square so to begin with we are going to talk about rectangles so like you can see over here um, this is how a rectangle looks like um, this is a shape of a rectangle i'm using a little pointer i don't know if you're able to see it so this is a rectangle but we are going to see some things about the rectangle i would like you to have a pen have a book so that you can write some notes because you might hear what i'm saying but you might not be able to remember everything that i've said so it is better that you write some notes down because we are going to do some exercise right after this lesson so let's go on a rectangle is a four-sided shape like i said uh earlier on we are talking about quadrilaterals and a rectangle is one of them so it is a four-sided shape it has four interior right angles the word interior means inside and right angles are the angles of 90 degrees we are going to see that in a form of um of a summary so don't worry you're going to see all this so it has four interior angles it has two lines of symmetry that means that you can perfectly fold it so that one corner touches another corner only two times uh the short side of a rectangle is called width and the long side is called length uh more about the things that you have been looking at are properties of rectangles but let's just go on and talk about more first one like you see you saw uh or like i told you a rectangle is a quadrilateral a four-sided shape the opposite side are parallel and equal to each other that is self-explained uh, you know parallel lines are those lines which have the same distance between them some people define them as lines which cannot meet but there are lines which have the same distance between them each interior angle or each inside angle of a rectangle is equal to 90 degrees both the diagonals have the same length we are going to shortly look at what diagonals are so do not be confused and uh, be like oh what are diagonals you're going to see what diagonals are in the next picture and i know i'm speaking so fast because i would like this video to be short please pause it and look at the words so that you can understand and you can write down something so a rectangle with side length a and b has a perimeter as 2a plus 2b so that means if you want to find the perimeter or the distance around a rectangle you have to multiply each side by 2 and you add them together so for example if this uh, your screen currently i know most of you guys using computers or laptops the screen where you're watching this is a rectangle i suppose so if you want to find the distance around that screen where you're watching this video you get the long side multiply it the length of the long side multiply it by two and the length of the short side multiplied by two as well the two answers that you get you add them and you will find the distance around that shape or you can decide to add each one of them all together and you get the answer the sum 
of the interior angles is equal to 360 degrees. Uh, the word sum means addition. So when you add all the inside angles of a rectangle, you end up getting the answer as 360 degrees. So more about the properties of a rectangle, uh, but in picture form. So we have this rectangle right here, which is a rectangle A, B, C, D. So like you can see those red dotted lines that are passing inside the rectangle and they intersect. The word intersect means to meet. They meet at that point in the middle, which is O. Those lines are called diagonal lines. So you can see uh, on, the far, on, on the other side, on the right side of your screen, opposite sides A, B, and C, D. So line A, B, and line C, D are equal. And also line A, D from over here, you look at my pointer on point A, up to there are equal. Let me use another color. I'm using uh, blue right now. So, um, over there is line uh, is point A and point D. So line AD from here up to there is equal to BC line BC. So the diagonals AO from over there in the corner up to the middle here is equal to OC. So the distance from point A point O is the same as O to C. And you also have to understand that the distance from D to O is equal to the distance from O to B. And another thing that I didn't include in this picture and um, I would like you to understand is like diagonal AC is equal to diagonal BD. So the length of this diagonal AC is equal to the length of BD. So the angles, you look at the inside angles like I was telling you, over here angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D are all equal to 90 degrees. All these angles that you can see are equal to 90 degrees. Let's go on. So, how to find the area of a rectangle? Uh, like we saw in the live lesson um, on Wednesday, to find the area of a rectangle, you multiply the length, that is the long side, by the width. And the formula is, a is equal to L times damned U, where A stands for area and L stands for length and damned U stands for width. So this sign over here that you can see usually means to multiply. So don't be confused by the star and the like it is something which is uh, mathematical or anything. It means multiply so let's look at a square which by the way almost looks like a rectangle but it has one one single difference from the rectangle but a square is a rectangle with four equal sides so unlike the rectangle a square has all its sides equal Although relatively simple and straightforward to deal with, squares have several interesting and notable properties. We are going to look at the properties of the square. So, this is how a square looks like. These lines, these short, short lines that you can see over here, are 
put there to show you that all the sides of this shape, the square, are equal. And like you can see, uh, the properties that we saw earlier on about the rectangle, they are most of them are the same as this because this is also a rectangle. You can see all the interior angles are equal to 90 degrees. And if, if I put a diagonal here and I put another diagonal over there, the diagonals are also going to be of the same length. So properties of a square in, we're going to briefly talk about the properties of a square, but you will realize that some of them are the same as the other ones that we talked about. So the, the diagonals of a square bisect each other and meet at 90 degrees. The diagonals of a square bisect its angles. To bisect is to divide equally into two if you're wondering what bisect means. Opposite sides of the square are parallel and equal in length. So the opposite sides, like the rectangle, are parallel to one another. That means that the distance between them is the same. So all four angles of the square are equal, and as you remember, they are all equal to 90 degrees. And we are probably not going to look at this again, but when you add all the interior angles or the inside angles, you end up getting the answer as 360 degrees. By the way, in mathematical terms, that can also be called the interior angle sum. So all the four sides of a square are equal. The diagonals of the square are equal. Okay, so how about finding the area of a square? So the area of a square is given by area equals a squared. And you know, when you talk about a letter squared, that means it is that letter multiplied by that letter. So if I write a squared, it simply means a times a. And uh, I decided to use a. You can use anything else. Some people use a because it is for sides. Or some other people use l, which is for length. It doesn't matter. Uh, so long as you mean that letter that you're using is the length of the side of, a, of the square. So if I give you an example, like you took a picture, and that picture is in a square form. You took a selfie in the morning, and that selfie is, um, is in a square form, and you would like to know what area does it cover? You can get the side of that picture multiplied by the side of that picture and you end up getting the area of the picture that you took. Or if you, let's give an, an example which I'm not going to write over here. Uh, or maybe I can decide to write something. I don't know if that is possible right now. Um, suppose you find um, let me try to draw a square over here. I'm sorry, it is not going to be perfect because I'm not using um, straight lines. So, let me try to draw a, a little square over here in um, using a pen. Suppose you have a square that looks like this. And you would like to find its area. And this side is 7 centimeters. And you know all 
the sides are equal. So to find the area, like you see over there, you will have to get 7 multiplied by 7. And every time you're finding the area of any shape, you have to make sure that your units are squared. Excuse my handwriting because this, <laughs> this is not how I write. So the area of this square will be forty nine, but not forty nine alone or just centimeters, but centimeters squared. Ah, there you have it. And I know we are not talking about a uh, perimeter, but it is also important for you guys to know that the perimeter of a square is given by a formula 4a, where you get 4 multiplied by the length of the side. Let's go on. And I would like you guys to watch this video over here. So I'm going to keep quiet and I would like you guys to watch this video. How to find the area of a rectangle. Area is the amount of space inside a flat shape. It's important for everyone to know how to find it. Adults need to find the area of a room to buy the right amount of flooring and you need to know it in school to ace your tests. The first shape we work with in school is a rectangle. Area is measured in square units, so let's divide this rectangle up into square units and find out how many it has. 5 10 15 15 square units. We have three rows of 5. 3 times 5 is 15. The quickest way of finding the area of a rectangle is to measure two adjacent sides and multiply those numbers. These sides are next to each other, so they're adjacent. We call them length and width. So the area of a rectangle is length times width. If we're finding the area of this rectangle here, we could carve it up into little squares and count all of those, but that would take a long time on a big rectangle. Instead, it's always much quicker to multiply length times width to get the area. On our rectangle, length is 10 metres and the width is 7 metres. Area is length times width, so 10 times 7 is 70. 70 what? The diagram shows us the measurements are in metres, so we have to put that in our answer. Area is 70 m for metres squared. The little 2 superscripted up here stands for squared. It makes sense because we measured in two dimensions, length and width. Here's one last rectangle. The length is 10 centimetres and the width is 4 centimetres. Area is length times width, so 10 times 4 is 40. The area is 40 centimetres squared. Always use that unit of measurement squared in your answer. If you forget